Hi friends, welcome to my channel. You are watching Physio Facts. I am bringing the interesting facts in the field of physiotherapy. Myself, Dr. Alphonse Saburo Swami. Let us move on to the video. In the previous video, I was telling about normal infields, which was described by Syriax. There are three types of normal infields. They are soft tissue approximations, tissue stretch, bone to bone infield. These are the structures that are getting involved where soft tissues are getting approximated to each other. The second one, the soft tissues are getting stretched. And the third one, the bone and bone are coming in contact with each other. These are the structures what is happening to those things while doing uh, this technique but uh, the feeling or the perception what the therapist will be getting will be for soft tissue approximation it will be soft and fill for tissue stretch it will be firm and fill and uh, the bone to bone the infill will be hard it means the resistance offered will be soft the resistance offered will be firm the resistance offered will be hard Today we are going to see about abnormal infills. We studied about three normal infills which has to be present in the joints at different different joints in particular. Certain joints will have certain infill. For example, elbow flexion soft infill, elbow extension hard infill. But uh, there are circumstances where the infill will be different from normal because of various underlying pathology. That's what we are going to discuss in the video. There are five types of abnormal infills have been reported. They are muscle spasm, capsular, bone to bone, empty and spring. When you read this easily you can understand for the restriction of range of motion these are, these are the structures they are the reason why the movement is getting restricted. But there are certain words that will really confuse you that will explain right now. First of all, how to remember this abnormal infix? They are five. To make it easy, I have made this diagram so that we can easily remember even after many days. If you see here, when you try to reach the different structures in the body, after when you cross the skin, for example, after when you cross the skin, you will approach muscle, then capsule, then bone. After that, nothing. So we think of empty. And after empty, we have no other structure to search out there. So we will bounce back and come as if you are jumping from a spring. So to remember the abnormal infills, the mnemonics are muscular, capsula, bone to bone. And underneath bone, there is no special structure for sake empty. And we are coming back spring. So this is a way you can easily remember muscular spasm, capsular, bone to bone, empty and springy block one by one in detail. These are the resistance offered to passive range of motion when there is muscle spasm. They will be sudden, probably accompanied with pain. The end fields will be hard and sudden. They are of two types, early muscle spasm, late muscle spasm. If you keenly notice, we are reading about infield and that infield will be of sudden and hard but there are two types of infields in muscular spasm one is early muscle spasm and late muscle spasm in this, the late muscle spasm get more weighted because the reason will be explained right now As I studied before, there are two types of uh, muscle spasm that can limit the range of motion and the different infield can be observed Early muscle spasm. This occurs early in the range of motion. Means when the range of motion is started, the resistance will be more to the movement and it will become normal. If we look at the diagram down, the movement is started, but it starts slowly and goes faster like normal. In the beginning, because of inflammation and because of the acuteness of the condition, the range of motion is a bit slow and it offers resistance to the passive range of motion. If you read late muscle spasm the right hand side, it occurs in the end range of motion caused by instability of the joint. You could look at the demonstration down over there. The movement starts faster but ends slowly. It means at the end range of motion, it offers more resistance to the passive movement tested by the therapist. We are reading about 
end field the second diagram really explains about the end field the first one is the resistance that is offered in the early range of motion so this particular one the right side one the late muscle spasm explains about the end field and it will be hard and it will be sudden following the normal range of motion example is uh, joint instability it means if there is a problem in the joint stability and certain muscle groups will go for muscle cording so that it won't allow further movement so that the mus the joint stability can be prevented for example shoulder dislocations very common dislocation shoulder is anterior dislocation the maneuver or the the position which leads to this anterior dislocation is abduction and external rotation so if abduction and external rotations are prevented or limited this dislocation can be prevented so as a reflex mechanism the internal rotator will become tighter so that external rotation and abduction can be limited for example the subscapularis muscle tighter which is an adductor and internal rotator itself so if the adductor if the subscapular muscle become shorter and tighter it won't allow the maximum movement to abduction and external rotation thereby preventing dislocation so that is the reason the muscle goes for tightness and when you check in field to that particular joint there will be free movement followed by sudden block because of the muscular spasm which is which is going to be hard and it is about capsular end field now where the capsular tightness will be present the end field will be similar to the tissue stretch it means it will be firm and the range of motion will be reduced probably the capsule will be damaged there are two types of uh, capsular end field can be appreciated when doing passive range of motion uh, they are hard capsular and soft capsular so this soft capsular should not be confused with the uh, Uh, soft end field that is uh, soft tissue approximation here it is said about uh, capsular involvement the end field is firm in that the firm end field can be categorized into two harder capsular softer end field of firm variety so it is about hard capsular end field uh, it has a, a thicker stretching quality and again it comes under tissue stretch where it will be firm in feel but here it will be little thicker because of the chronic city of the condition and the limitation come after smooth movement this is very important point to understand suppose you'll check the passive range of do the passive range of motion to that particular joint and for that particular movement movement will be freely coming but after certain range of motion immediately it gets limited as you see nina frozen shoulder what do you call the second stage of uh, adhesive capsulitis is where the inflammatory process has come down now only the restriction of range of motion prevails more so that time when you do this kind of uh, end field will be elicited so look at this diagram here when the person is you are seeing a person from above he is standing and his elbow is flexed and he is doing trying to do external rotation of his right shoulder and this demonstrates the normal range of motion which comes up to 80 degree and the end field is going to be firm that is normal if if that particular person is having capsular involvement especially chronic condition of condition or disease that affects the capsule what will be the end field it will be having hard capsular means thicker stretching quality little harder than the firm end field let us see here free movement followed by sudden block soft capsula it is in contrary to the previous hard capsula here again the end field is going to be firm which is a tissue stretch because capsule is getting stretched but the thing is it is an acute condition where there will be inflammation or uh, um, inflammatory or swelling present inside the joint so that will give an increasing resistance from beginning to the end of the range of motion when you start when you are giving passive range of motion to the particular joint where there is swelling and inflammation of the capsule there will be resistance to the passive range of motion in the beginning and when you proceed when you carry on to do the same movement till the end range of motion the resistance will be increasing to the passive range of motion 
but the resistance is a kind of a resistance you feel boggy boggy in the sense of movement within a fluid and you can feel the presence of fluid or the resistance that is offered by the fluid content inside the joint which for comparatively in a normal life we can say hydraulic pressure how we feel that because of the fluid present in it that kind of a mechanism will present here where when you do a movement the movement will be giving offered some resistance because of the presence of a fluid in the joint see here this is the normal range of motion you are seeing from above a person is standing and the elbow is flexed to 90 degrees doing external rotation of the shoulder the normal range of motion is suppose if you take 80 degree and the end will be a firm end feel for the passive movement now if that particular joint is having inflammation the capsule is involved if it is the inflammation is acute process now the range of motion will be of this type the resistance to the passive range of motion will be of this type where a boggy or resistance will be felt and it will be increasing until uh, when the range of motion increases as well as there will be restriction of range of motion too so this is an example of soft capsule next is bone to bone again this we studied in normal infill also where uh, the restriction of the movement gets limited because of the bony contact again same here in abnormal infill because of a fracture or osteophyte formation or tumor or mall alignment whatever it is the range of motion getting restricted because of two bones are coming in contact with each other for example cervical spine extension because of the presence of osteophyte range of motion is restricted and one more example i can give you is uh, uh, elbow extension itself elbow extension normal infill is bony but uh, when elbow extension is possible up to 0 degree of extension for example this diagram in its demonstration you see elbow extension passively going up to the 0 degree and the infill is hard suppose you take the same joint elbow extension you are doing but it is not able able to take up to the end range of motion but uh, in the middle of the range of motion it is get restricted and if it is going to give hard infill now you call it as abnormal infill we know el infill of uh, elbow is hard now here this particular joint the infill of uh, that particular movement extension is hard but this is normal the other one is abnormal let us take mt feel uh, where uh, a movement uh, will produce this pain there is no mechanical resistance it means you are doing passive range of motion to check the md field of one particular joint movement you are taking to the end range but uh, before you could reach the end before you could reach the restriction or the restraint to the movement or mechanical resistance is not felt but the patient is not allowing you to perform because of pain where it happens when there is an acute inflammation or like a bursitis tendinitis all that so you are not experiencing any mechanical resistance but because of pain you are not able to do so you call it as empty in feel let us see the demonstration here elbow extension passively you are giving imagine you are giving passively because of uh, li certain limitations i am not able to bring the exact animation here so you imagine a person your therapist is doing this extension of elbow here extension of elbow to 0 degree infill is hard this is normal what happens when you call it is an empty infill extension of elbow you are not able to do because of pain at certain range of motion you are trying you are convincing the patient but he is not he is not allowing you to do because of the severe pain so you call it as empty infill that will make you a clueless which structure is limiting so what you will do you will walk for pain relief or mulligan technique to reposition the uh, structures in the intact way but this infill the passive range of motion tells you you are not able to take to the tissue resistance because of pain within the arc of movement and the last springy block which is again similar to tissue stretch it means when you are stretching a soft tissue capsule ligament tendon you will get a firm in feel so here also it's a firm in feel but there is a rebound effect with a thicker stretching quality found with a meniscal injuries of knee when it is locked means when knee is locked or unable to go into full extension when you apply pressure the knee will go into extension when you leave it will come back to uh, some degree of uh, a flexion position 
so that gives a, a springy movement rebound effect so it is called a springy block so that's all about uh, uh, the end fields of we studied about a muscular spasm capsular bone to bone empty infill and springy block and the way to remember is uh, just imagine you are crossing different structures from above to underneath so muscle capsule bone and then it's nothing empty and you have to come back by jumping back is a, a spring thank you guys for listening and uh, this is uh, uh, Dr. Alphonse Saburo Swami signing off and so far we were listening about uh, normal as well as abnormal infields and if you have any doubts or uh, any queries regarding this uh, normal and uh, abnormal infields please uh, give your questions in the comment box as well as don't forget to uh, click the bell icon so that you will get the notification as soon as we make new videos. Thanks for listening and uh, we will meet in another video very shortly. Thank you.